And welcome on in. It's another edition of the Aggie Coaches Show. And uh, while we'd love to be doing nothing but uh, talking about X's and O's and, and football games and a recap of the Washington State game and looking ahead to other games coming down the pipeline, it's uh, not quite yet to be. And uh, we'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on. Uh, but with that said, uh, we still have a great opportunity for you to learn more about Aggie athletics and what's going on up at Utah State. John Hartwell was kind enough to join us last week. And this week, uh, the man himself, Jerry Bobey, hanging out with us here at Old Chicago. How are you, sir? I'm really good. Let's really good. Oh, oh, we got a mic on. It might be a little bit better. Oh, no, Jay, <laughs> turn me up. Really good. It's awesome. good to be with you. Uh, every day is a little different for you, isn't it? This is the most interesting time to work in collegiate athletics that I've ever I ever thought it could be. So yeah. every day is a new day. It, it, it really, <clears throat> it really seems as if there's just you know you never know you get up in the morning you look at twitter and then you start getting through your day and it's like okay what what hurdle are we gonna have to overcome today? yeah it starts earlier because the news i mean the cycle <clears throat> the cycle is much quicker yeah with what's going on and so you start off early to kind of get caught up and then the phone calls start the phone calls start immediately i mean i Coach Anderson will call at yeah. six thirty in the morning, and we have a conversation about what the day looks like, and it changes. And you know, this is hard for coaches because you get co coaching is almost like teaching in a way that you have your pedagogy set up and your curriculum all lined out, and you know what you do on September eighth and ninth every year. Yeah. And now it, they have to pivot so much quicker than they're comfortable with because they're very into their routines. Yeah, they're creatures of habit. Yeah, and, no and, question. I mean, you know, you go to uh, you go to Gary Anderson's office and you see a outline of practice. He has down to the second oh, yeah. what everybody's doing at what given time. And, and to tell coaches like, hey, sorry, put everything on hold for a little bit. That's, that's tough for these guys. And the greatest coaches are the ones that are planned out and use every second of time uh, to the most. I mean, because winning is on the margin. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you're an Olympian uh, between – the gold medal in last place is less than a second. Yeah. So uh, it's the same in our business, too. It, success comes on the margin, and, and when you don't know each day what it might bring, that's that's really hard for, for some of those creatures that have it to, to figure out. Yeah. Uh, last week, John Hartwell on the program, and, and, and I'll ask you probably a lot of the same questions because who knows, maybe some things have changed since then. But uh, I do know that the Mountain West Conference is – keeping a close eye on the landscape. They issued a statement today saying that, hey, look, a month ago we we had a landscape of reasons why we decided not to play fall sports. A lot of those reasons still exist. We're still working through a lot of issues and essentially said, hey, we're, we're, we're working on it. We're trying. We're, yeah. we're working to get there because now's a little bit of a difficult time because people are watching games in some conferences on the weekend. And, and I think that uh, there's some fans out there that say, well, you know, why can't we go? Yeah, and especially when you had a big game uh, last night that affects uh, fans in our state. Um, so you've got people saying, why can't we do this? And and e But each conference is different in what their mission is, in the diversity within the conference. I yeah. mean, we have California schools that haven't even been on campus yet since, since the outbreak back in March. So, you know, our situation... Um, as a conference may be different than what the SEC is dealing with. Well, it is different. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, I think it's Washington and California. I'm not sure about Oregon. Maybe I'm flip-flopping Washington and Oregon. They can't, they can't have practices. Yeah. You know, it's hard to play a game if you can't bring, bring players together and, and actually have an organized team activity. Well, and even the game last night at halftime, we learned that That's one true. of the two teams hadn't even gone live yet, uh, which, which you could tell. I mean – it's pretty obvious, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think that's just a, a different situation that everyone's dealing with and how they're getting through it. How uh, you talk about your coaches, though, how are, how are people in that athletic department handling uh, these, you know, frankly, unprecedented times? You know, I've been really proud of our, of our coaches and staff and in the way that we've pivoted. I mean, you know, I'll get people that will come up and say, hey, what are you guys doing right now? There's nothing to do since yeah. you don't have sports. And and uh, we're, we're making plans and contingency plans on every scenario. I mean, going into football, not knowing, you know, a week, two weeks before camp was to start, whether we'd be going or not, we had to plan that we were going. We had yeah. to plan for what it might look like if we weren't going. Um, there's so many more stakeholders right now to, to keep your eye on, uh, your fan base, your alums, your student athletes have different needs right now. Um, the, it's a confusing time with are we going to be on campus for classes? Are we back online? I mean, all of that stuff had to be planned out. We had a plan with football 
Um, in fact, the day before uh, the Mount West Conference and the Pac-12 came out, uh, my peers at Utah and BYU had a meeting with the governor to go over what our stadium plan was going to look like. Wow. Um, and, you know, all, all that got canceled. And now as we get ready for basketball, we've got to go into it planning to start on time with three or four or five different plans of when we could start. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot harder in some ways uh, for everyone because you have to have so many plans. One thing that that statement from the Mountain West Conference said earlier today that uh, in terms of, uh, of winter sports, that things right now appear to be um, uh, on, on, on target. Um, and, and again, everything can change here at any given moment. But they said that essentially we're working towards at least some level of a regular start for winter. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think going into it now and every day we come to terms as a society with COVID and how it relates and, and the, the virus is changing. You know, I saw something last week that, you know, because we've always gone with this approach of masks and, and what really yeah. does it do. And, and now there's some studies out that's, that say that if you wear a mask and you contract the, the virus, it might be uh, easier for you to get through it than it may have been with it. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's changing every day. Every day's a little different. For and sure. and we've yeah. got to get there. So I, I think uh, for us, we're planning to start on time in our fall sports, but we're also planning contingencies around that, that if it, it, if it gets bumped to, you know, there's some conversation about maybe starting after Thanksgiving uh, because w our students won't be coming back for in in classroom seating uh, at the Thanksgiving holiday break, and maybe that's a better time to start. So we got a plan for that too, and then what the spectrum's gonna look like from yeah. a fan base standpoint. Yeah, the line here, other winter sports and spring sports are currently expected to proceed as originally planned and would be conducted concurrently with the rescheduled sports in what could be a, quote, robust spring offering. Well, that yeah. sounds like a, yeah. uh, like a, a buffet. <laughs> like we're at Old Chicago, we got like 10 pizzas in front of us. Get crazy. Yeah, and our, our staff's actually not gotten any bigger. So if we have potentially a, a, a you know, volleyball game in the morning, a basketball game in the afternoon, yeah. a football game at night or vice versa, then you know we're in it. So which, if that's what it is, then we'll be ready to go and we'll figure it out. Um, so we've kind of got to be ready for every scenario that could be thrown at us. Uh, you and I have talked a lot about this on the air. John Hartwell and I have talked about this as well. Uh, the 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 difficulties, but also the the opportunities of spring football. And I know it's something that the conference is still looking at it at, at a high level. Yeah, and uh, you know, Gary and I had this conversation earlier today about what you know. I mean, football coaches, purists especially, look at the spring as maybe their most important time for training, and uh, that's the first time that you get some of those kids in back in your, your you know, the freshmen that'll start. So on one hand, playing in the spring uh, accomplishes a goal for those seniors that didn't get a chance to play, for your fan base to be able to see some football, but but it takes away uh, yeah. a traditional spring practice time. So how do you implement? what you need to do at that point, because as we saw last night, it, it may work in theory that we're just going to get a few games in and, and work out the kinks. When you, when you get going and you snap that first, you kick off the first kickoff, it's a competitive situation, and one was ready to play last night and one wasn't. Yeah. So you have to approach it that, look, we're, we're training up our young guys, uh, but it's not, a, it's not a traditional spring if we end up playing in the spring. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, February in Logan isn't a lot of fun sometimes. No, uh, <laughs> no. I, I was reminded of that after being gone 20, 24 years, coming even, back last year. Even, uh, you know, 40 miles to the south, it's still a little bit better. No question. Uh, you've been, uh, we talked about that, uh, as whether the athletic director at Weber State or, or now here at Utah State or even at the High School Athletic Association, uh, you've been around a lot of things that are, you know, that, that can be difficult to handle sometimes or, or different situations. You've never dealt with anything like this, have you? This is the most unprecedented career experience ever, and I've been through some interesting times. But, uh, I mean, I, I, and I don't know that it'll ever be matched. Yeah. Uh, just hope with, not. I hope not, too. Yeah. I mean, 2020, it, 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 2020 in my rearview mirror may be as good as it gets. Uh, with social injustice issues and and the virus, um, uh name, image, and likeness. I mean, it, yeah. it seems like everything that could have happened uh, has happened all at once. And, and there's a confluence of all these issues and, and the lack of patience. And I mean, we're all a little grumpy right now. We've been in this for a while. We want to get back to some sense of normalcy. And, and you throw that in 
with the other ingredients, and it's a it's a powder keg. Yeah, uh, I did want I did a, a podcast on the Aggies All the Way podcast. You can find that on any of your podcasting platforms, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever the case might be. And uh, I, I had a great conversation with Jumani Robertson as well as DJT Alve. You talk about the uh, the social unrest, the the new class that that they helped develop with Ross Peterson, uh, with the Gary Anderson kind of spearheaded. Uh, the uh, un, you know untold truths. I think history twenty two ten, uh, a great class that is now being available at Utah State. Uh, that, it's just a remarkable way of taking a situation that is kind of an ugly situation we're involved right now. What can we do to do something proactive and help out? And that class is just remarkable. Oh, it's going to be so exciting! I'm I'm really proud of our student athletes and our coaches for for having the vision vision and the courage to do that. I I had the opportunity to spend some time with Dr. Peterson. Uh, we went down, Ross and I rode down together to see some donors a couple of weeks ago. And on our way back, all we did is talk about the curriculum for this yeah. course. And, you know, I recently had an opportunity to present before HBCUs, the historically black universities, um, on some, I've been serving on a committee, academic committee with the NCAA the last nine years. And I presented to all of the HBCUs in our country about some academic issues that they were dealing with and some some resources that the NCAA puts out there to help historically black uh, institutions. And as I was giving this, I, w I mean, I was the only white person in the, uh, on the dais or in the, in the panel on a Zoom call. I s found myself really sensitive to what was behind me on the wall, w you know, what the yeah. issues, and Ross and I talked about that right now. Our sensitivities uh, are heightened as far as, you know, the messages we send and, the, and our biases. And he had such great insight as to the history. I asked him about statues coming down he had such great insights about how that all worked out after the Civil War. And he, and he says it in a way from an educational standpoint that I think is going to be really beneficial to all of our students uh, on campus, student athletes as well as our general students that desire to take it. I'm really excited about that class. Well, I know there's, uh, there's been a huge demand of people wanting to get in on that class. Yeah, I, I think they're going to fill it and then some. Yeah. Uh, it won't. Th this is not going to go away. I think this is going to be a popular class going forward. Uh, speaking of classes a little bit, and this is, by the way, if you have questions for uh, Jerry Bovey, you can reach out to us. Uh, we'll have an open mic section where uh, anybody here has to, wants to ask a question, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can also reach me on Twitter, at Scotty G Zone, and uh, you can uh, tweet at us and and uh, we can uh, let your voice be heard. These you guys over here in the front row just look oh, like, like they've got something they got more something than softballs going. to throw. So we'll see what they got. Uh, but talking about classes, uh, are you, uh, I, you know, I know it's a lot of kids are doing so. I've got a son here. I know you've got a son that's uh, at Utah State. Uh, a lot of classes online, some in person after Christmas or excuse me, after Thanksgiving, they all go uh, online. How have your student athletes been able to handle that with grades? And being able to, you know, they're still student athletes. They still got to go to class and do what they're supposed to do there. They've done a great job. We had our best academic uh, semester ever, I think, uh, ever in our history last semester. And they've done really well with it. They pivoted. Uh, they, you know, it was a team effort. Our academic advisors jumped on, on board to help. But long-term long sustainability, that's not the college experience um, yeah. for, the, for all of our students. And so getting back to being on campus and having all the activities that you have. I mean, I, as an Aggie student, we, we were here. Oh, yeah. And, and all of those social activities. Greatest and, six years of my life. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'd have to add up on <laughs> yeah. two hands. The yeah, number exactly. Of, but, but the Halloween howl and all the things that you do, you can't do that virtually. And so, you know, we need to get back. And we are. Uh, President Cock has been amazing at having the vision of we've got to be back here. And, you know, she was asked the first week, what is the number of COVID? What's that magic number? And she didn't want to talk about it because yeah. we're going to do everything we can do to, to keep this thing going. That's awesome. Uh, I Obviously, the financial ramifications of COVID are significant. And because of that, uh, and, and because uh, universities and athletic departments uh, need as much support as they always can get. We're going to talk about some fundraising efforts coming up next. Ryan McLean's going to hang out with us as well as we are live here at Old Chicago. We'd love for you to come by, hang out with us, ask questions uh, to Jerry Bovey. We'll continue on right here on the Aggie Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College.
Associate Athletic Director Ryan McLean, kind enough to uh, join us as well. How are you, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, the pleasure's all ours. you got to classy up this joint a little Everything bit. Everything got a little smarter now. I know. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, I'm the backup dancer. Well, I'll tell you what, Ryan does not have a face for radio. Ryan has a face for TV. And by the way, you can also uh, check us out on Instagram, or excuse me, not on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, and uh, also on the Utah State uh, Aggie Athletic website as well for all the Aggie coaches show. All right, so Ryan, let's talk about uh, your responsibilities and uh, what you're involved with these days. Yeah, so uh, oversee our development unit, which is basically the day-to-day -day fundraising efforts for the department. So everything from our annual fund up through major gifts and work hand in hand with with jerry on a lot of that as well i know when uh when you came in you started looking at uh various guys to give you know opportunities to and ryan was a guy you you pointed to pretty quick i got to meet ryan uh so my wife and i came to a game in december or no uh uh probably February. Nevada? Yeah, I, we came to the Nevada game. Oh, and, the infamous one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and during the during that game, my wife reached over and said, "We need to come back." And so the deal was done. But I sat next to Ryan, and we visited him, not knowing at all who the guy was sitting next to yeah. him. And but he passed, and he's a sharp, you know, sharp young mind. Uh, he's uh, started in the marketing area, which you know, all great administrators should start in the marketing area there you go and uh he's an ou guy so we got a, a couple of ou guys you know I, in our I don't department think the other guy counts yeah probably not but <laughs> but ryan counts yeah right? exactly <laughs> so, uh let's talk about some of the uh the programs though well first off um I, I i really admire john hartwell and his uh transparency in terms of what the financial landscape looks like and while uh it's not pretty uh, compared to some of your peers and compared to some at the Power 5 level, uh, you know, it, it certainly could be much, much worse. Uh, he talked about how right now you're looking at somewhere between a revenue revenue shortfall of about $3 million. Um, and, and at that point, you look at, okay, what can we do? And I know that you look at costs that can be cut and, and some things that you can do. And then also... You know, you have to ask for help, and, and it's it's okay to go out there and say, look, we, we need some help, we need some assistance, and uh, the Aggie Strong program, uh, Ryan, let's talk a little bit about that and what that entails. Yeah, so we launched our Aggie Strong campaign in early August, so we're about a month into it right now, and really it's it's based around, hey, let's, let's all join together. It's obviously challenging times across the board, across college athletics. Everybody knows that. That's not a surprise, but... But let's join together and support Utah State however we can and make sure we're, we're doing everything can, we can to get better during this time, take advantage of this time, and then on the other side, we're in a better spot. So we kind of look at it as, you know, it's an opportunity. Everything we can do right now, it's when people aren't watching us, I guess that's the old, you know, what, whatever you're doing in the off season, whatever kind of workouts you're doing in the off season. For us, whatever we're doing right now, when the eyes aren't on us as much, um, that's going to make us better in the future. So, so really, that's that's the gist of it. And um, there are a lot of different aspects to that, um, from from our football season tickets, um, folks. You know, we're, we've asked a lot of people, hey, if you've you've already paid for your football season tickets, uh, we'd love for you to to keep your money with us, and we'll roll it over to the spring or whenever we play football again. And and that helps us out a lot right now. Uh, there's the philan philanthropic giving piece to that. So really a push to, hey, we, whatever you can do, whatever you can donate to help out with student-athlete scholarships and student-athlete resources, we would love for you to do that. And then, um, and then the major giving piece as well in our Blue A Society, which has uh, really taken off over the past couple years. Uh, the Blue A Society consists of donors who commit to $25,000 or more over a five-year period. And uh, we just, just in the past couple of weeks, we've had uh, four new donors step up at that level. So it's been really positive, and um, a lot of people are stepping up to help us. Well, I know that in, in that case, too, there's a lot of great experiences at Utah State, and there's a lot of great things you can create for donors uh, and, and opportunities. And I love the attitude of saying, you know, it's just not a one-size-fits-all. You meet with somebody and say, you know, what would you like? You know, you want to go on this trip, or do you want to... Uh, you know, be it, you know, like there's so many different opportunities that you can do at Utah State with various coaches and various games and things like that to customize something that makes them, that makes a donor feel really excited to be a part of Utah State. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, well, I, I was sorry, gonna, well, you know, we'll, 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 ta we'll tag team here. Uh, when I left here in 90, 1995 to go to the high school association, your only choice was Big Blue Club. It was the Big Blue Fund, yeah. scholarship fund. And so it didn't really address what all the passions of your, your, your donor base or your fan base was. And now you have this umbrella of Aggies Unlimited that encompasses the Blue A, the, the Merlin Olson Fund, the Wayne Estes Fund, the Big Blue Scholarship Fund, um, and other gift uh, funds for each sport. Is, is, so it's really a menu of what is it that you have a passion for and let's find a, a fit. Um, when you can find the fit to the donor's passion, then your opportunity for growth goes, goes way high. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of donors who, you know, they may be pet, they, maybe they're an alum for the softball from the softball program, or they want to establish a, a scholarship for student athletes, and you know, w having those options available and, and being that bridge to to work with our donors and, and figure out what they're passionate about and how they want to help our student athletes that that goes a long way. And so it's it's more than just hey, we have the Big Blue Scholarship Fund, or hey, we have this facility project. There's so many more things that, that we can do, and, and uh, whether that's just through a program, uh, you know, softball, gymnastics, whatever it is, uh, scholarships, um, you know, facilities, whatever. Um, there, we have a lot of opportunities there. Well, I, I like the fact that you're shooting for a number, too, because uh, for, I think, the rest of our lives, 2020 is always going to be kind of a dirty four-letter word. Uh, but you are looking for 2020 uh, people that, you know, different philanthropic uh, people to help out and, and support the program in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. And we're off to a great start. We I looked this morning. We're, we're at about 540, which if you compare that to last year, we're up about 30 uh, percent this time uh, compared to last year. So so we're off to a good start. Obviously, a long way to go. And we're, we're shooting high. I, I think the, uh, the the record of uh, the amount the the number of donors, our highest number of donors we've ever had, I think, uh, was about 1,600, I believe. So I don't think we've ever hit that 2,000 mark. So we're shooting high this year, and, and we, we have a long way to go, but we're, we're off to a good start, and a lot of people are stepping up. Do you get the sense, Jerry, when you talk to donors and, and talk to people that they understand that, yeah, okay, it's difficult times. What can we do together Absolutely. To we, we've been on the road the last couple of weeks spending time with donors, talking about what our situation is. And when John talks about a $3 million shortfall, that's after we've made $6 million in budget cuts. Correct. So yeah. so that's a total of $9 million that we had to account for. And, and so the coaches have done their part. I mean, we've, t we've taken as much as we can take without getting into the bone of the, of the program. Yeah. And so now we've got we've to find other ways to make this work. And they are there. I mean, we had to explain uh, at the front end on the season ticket side of, hey, it helps us if you let that cash roll um, because we need it to get through this year. We'll worry about even if we don't play in the spring and it gets pushed to the fall, we'll worry about the, the fall next year, hoping that it's not a nine million, depending on where we're at with with this no. virus. So we had to explain. And when we did, overwhelmingly, uh, our fan base and, That's and alums and donors have said, how can we help? Um, again, you don't have to be specific on this and not just Utah state, but college football overall, it's going to be a while. It's not just next year. It's not two. You're going to feel people are in college athletics are going to feel this year for a long time, right? Oh yeah. When, when you're talking about, uh, power five programs, looking at a hundred million dollar loan just yeah. to get by, I mean, I, I've, I've got friends that have said, Hey, if, if we don't find some resolution here, we don't know if we can make payroll after, you know, October. Um, that's a, that's an issue. So yeah. it's not just going to be a, it, this is going to stay with us for a while, but we'll get through it. Of course. Um, but, and, and it's interesting, the FCS seems to be a little more healthier financially because they're not, you know, you know the money is not as, as big as what it is at the power five level. Well, when, when you earmark, you know, 25 to 35 million a year in TV money, and it doesn't come. That really hurts mm -hmm. when, that, you're, when mean, you get one to three million. It's a little you, bit you, worse. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and you know, in the SEC, I think they're up to forty-five million yeah. now. So that that's out. Plus, you've got NCAA money that doesn't come. Um, you know, from the basketball from last spring. So I think since you guys punched your ticket, you should still get an NCAA tournament credit. Yeah, I would. I would think so too. But. I mean, uh, it was no soup for you, Kramer. <laughs> you know, we didn't have a tournament. You get to hold on to those for what, five years, is it? 
Yeah, those shares. The shares. That's yeah, what I was it's a share, for. and and for every win in the tournament, you carry that for the conference for five years. Yeah, so it's like hey, we made it. We were in. Yeah. you know, we we punched our ticket. We yeah, should we, get one of those. We'd like to be in that forty to you know if you can get wins every year and you start banking yeah. those up, it's a nice. Adds up and hurt. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, we're, we'll continue. Actually, a couple other programs before we go to break. Let's talk about the uh, Aggie auction. Uh, I know sometimes you've had it in the fall, sometimes in the spring. November twelfth. It's going to be the day, and it's going to be a uh, a virtual Aggie auction. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we had to pivot this year. Uh, past two years, well, I guess last year was the first year we had it in the fall, um, switching it up for various reasons. But, yeah, looking at it this fall, uh, obviously with a lot of the, the issues going on and, uh, you know, it would be tough to do an in-person auction. We may be limited on how many folks can travel out, so we uh, we pivoted to a virtual auction. And um, the more we thought about about it, the more we looked into it, I think there are a lot of opportunities there. Uh, people from all over the country can, can participate. It's not just, hey, you have to be here in Logan to, to attend. Uh, the registration fee is it's free, so pretty uh, pretty reasonable there. You could you could get in, be a part of it, and um, and so yeah, I think we'll we'll be able to to have a good time with that, and uh, it should be a good good opportunity to get involved here in a, a couple months here in November. The amount of events and also experiences that come at that Aggie, Aggie auction are just incredible. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, gosh. It's a, the live auction last year, we had some tremendous opportunities and trips to the Final Four and the National Championship game and safari hunts and, uh, you know, all these different things. And, and a lot of those things are they're donated uh, by, by Aggie alums and supporters. And, uh, and so that goes a long way. And, and that's, you know, ma that makes a big – that event is one of our marquee events each year and, and raises a ton of money for student-athlete scholarships. So for us to look at the potential of not having it this year, that would have – that would have hurt us a lot. So uh, being able to, to flip it a little bit and go virtual and uh, look at those opportunities, I think, will go a long way for us. Now, that'll take place on November 12th. Uh, uh, we'll start some silent auction uh, bids. It'll go up on October 28th, and uh, we'll tweet out uh, some of the links to that. And then an event coming up here pretty quick is the uh, Aggie Strong Virtual 5K. Yep, yep. So another, another virtual event, but uh, next weekend. So basically Friday through, through Sunday, you'll have the opportunity to – Register and uh, a lot of I mean, over the past few months, you've seen a lot of these races go virtual. So you you run it wherever you you live, and we'll send you a little package with a race bib, a medal, a T-shirt, the whole deal. Uh, we want you to post about it, your route, your time, and um, and so yeah, that should be a fun opportunity just to engage Aggie alums, Aggie supporters across the country. That's coming up uh, September 28th through the 20th. Yeah, I was just going to say, 18th, yeah. and, and uh, you know, we've used the word opportunity a lot tonight. Yeah. I mean, we could sit back and say, oh, it's terrible what's happened with this virus. and But but it gives you an opportunity to take a bad situation and try to create other connection points. And so we're looking at drive-in movies uh, at Maverick Stadium. And just uh, if we can figure out how to do it, we're going to do it uh, just to keep, yeah. you know, keep keep our our fan base connected to us and and keep talking to them and and keep bringing us together of what we you know the, the it's the Aggies that bring us together this place is special as you know I mean it gets in your oh yeah it gets in your DNA and it never leaves and and so we got to find ways to continue to connect I mean you held your uh your golf tournament annual golf tournament you did it virtually yeah, and I know a lot of people had fun with that we may do that even when this is over as an additional opportunity for those that aren't here yeah to to continue to connect and and we'll make it bigger and better uh, as we go. Uh, take a break. Come back. By the way, if you've got questions for us, we'd love to hear from you. If you're here at Old Chicago, uh, just raise your hand, and Ajay will come and give you the uh, wireless mic. Uh, also, if you are watching on uh, Facebook, just type in your question, and we'd love to hear from you on uh, Facebook as well. You can also tweet at us, uh, at Scotty G Zone, at Jerry Bovey. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Just add Jerry Bovey. Uh, let's get, get my get phone out. Let's get the Twitter machine all fired up. Let's go. Uh, you're listening to the Aggie Coaches Show right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.
Scott Gerard hanging out with Jerry Bovey. Ryan McLean's hanging out with us as well. Uh, if you want your voice to be heard, you got a question just about anything, uh, Aggie Athletics, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, just raise your hand, and uh, Ajay will run the wireless mic out to you, and you can ask uh, whatever your whatever is in your heart's content. Uh, even talk about uh, Jerry Bovey's golf game if you'd like. Terrible. I'm not buying that. Yeah, that's not what I've heard. <laughs> um, by the way, Aaron uh, on the on the Instagram, or excuse me, Facebook page says, "How does one contribute to a specific fund or cause within athletics?" Yeah. So a number of different ways. So you could go to AggiesUnlimited.com and check out all the different funds. We have a, a bunch of information on there that kind of describes all the different areas that uh, that you can give towards. Uh, you can make a donation online. Uh, you can call us up at the athletics department, and uh, we kind of walk you through it, do it over the phone. Um, if you have questions, we can answer those. And uh, happy to come and meet with anyone and just talk through it as well. So, yeah, phone, uh, website. You can even do it by mail, old school style Never been mail. an easier time. Yeah. So yeah. we can, uh, yeah. Or Any Ryan, questions, Ryan will come just, to your house. Yeah, I'll come to your house, whatever you need. <laughs> uh, with the mask on, though. You know, yes. uh, we'll do it responsibly. Oh, but we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll meet you wherever you want. Uh, another question rolling in, Jerry, that, and, and a lot of people I know are, you know, look, the, it's been since I want to say, uh, and Doug Hoffman can correct me on this, I want to say since 1998 uh, when, they, when Utah State played Oregon State uh, was going, uh, a Pac-12 team not named Utah was going to be in uh, Maverick Stadium. Um, is there any news, and, uh, question coming, any news on the Washington State front if you're going to be able to get them back into Maverick Stadium. Yeah, we're we're definitely working on that. In fact, I I left messages today and emails with yeah. my uh, counterpart at Washington State to look at uh, because we know we're going there next year. Yeah. So in essence, this now becomes in our minds a guarantee game, and then we hope to do to do a home and home in the future. Uh, I think we're we're set with our schedule into the 2024 year, and so we're working on 25, 26, 27. Wow. Um, so that's the plan is to to try to work something out where we can get a home and home with them and then and then inquire as to a option for a guarantee game next year. Uh people don't I people don't really appreciate how forward thinking you have to be when it comes to football scheduling. Yeah, it's uh you have well, at our level you have four non-conference games and if BYU in a home and home situation is one of those, we got to work around uh, their opportunity to play because they're an independency, so they don't have a conference season. Yeah. So, you know, they're trying to fill a full season. Um, I think this year they would have played, what, three? Uh, they would have played Boise State, San, San Diego, Diego State, State, and Utah us. State, yeah. um, so working them into the mix at a good time, we're trying to – our conference wants us to play in the first five weeks, if possible, so that you can play a full conference schedule all the way through to Thanksgiving. Um, in our state, they kind of like to play our game over – uh, LDS conference weekend on a Friday night and and so we're we're working to get that solidified and then continue to find uh, home and home opportunities as best we can uh, to stay away from guarantee games where we're paying guarantees um, and then looking at the right guarantee games that make sense for our program and trying to build a football team football program another question rolling in if uh, players if seniors are granted an extra year of eligibility will everybody be granted an extra year of eligibility yeah, and I, I we dealt with that in the spring when this yeah. first happened. Uh, we took the approach that we were gonna we were gonna work as best we could within our numbers that that we have for scholarship opportunities, um, and and then work to get our seniors graduated. Uh, so that's what I foresee that it'll be for us. Uh, football is a tough one because you got I think this year we have 16 seniors. So if they all come back. What does that do to the rest of your recruiting classes? Because yeah. it has to balance out. And um, so, you know, we don't have to make that decision right now from a budget standpoint. That's a huge chunk of change to figure out how to, how to have a – and I don't even know what it looks like to have a football roster size that's yeah. pushing 130, 135 with equipment and travel and all the other things that go with that. So I, I think uh, in our conference, we're hearing that most of the Mount West Conference schools will not – um, bring back super seniors and add to their their number of 85. Um, that still remains to be seen, but we're working through those details. I mean, it's it's a tricky situation, um, and and I don't want to disparage the NCAA, but it's just kind of like they said, you you guys figure it yeah, out. Yeah, in essence, they gave everyone the opportunity to do it, yeah. and then we'll see where it goes. And I just think it's <clears throat> you know. 
for one, you've got student athletes that w- they want to move on with their lives and yep. and continue. I mean, especially in football, it's a full commitment to your body. A uh, lot of it probably works itself out. It does. Yeah. And underclassmen, we're not even talking about that right now. Um, we got to get through the senior situation and and try to meet their needs, and then we'll see where it goes. In the long run, we think through normal attrition, it will work itself out. Yeah. Um, but it's on our radar to figure out how do we balance the numbers. And in most of your sports where your your uh, squad sizes are lower, it's easier. Football is a tough one at, at an 85 squad size head count. It, it's a it's a clunky at best. Yeah, to say the least. Um, if you have a question again for Jerry Bovey or Ryan McLean, raise your hand. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get to you. Uh, the other question I think is kind of interesting too, in terms of the you know in terms of how basketball could look like. And I know there's a lot of people really excited about this year's basketball team. Um, the basketball oversight committee kind of recommended, I want to say November 25th, but is that, that's not an official. No, nope, that's a recommend. They don't, they don't really have the governing power to, okay. to, uh, I mean, but they're recommending that, uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, first of all, there's a huge lag right now with fall sports for those figuring out for those that are playing or trying to get a season in and that's changing. I saw, you know, Oklahoma state change last night, yeah. their game. There's going to be a lot of movement that way. Um, so f- for a lot of reasons that that does make sense to get through Thanksgiving and then come back. Uh, we're starting to, to have more in-depth conversations about what it would look like for our fan base, how many we think we can get in the spectrum safely. Um, and we'll see. I mean, we're hoping. I'm, I'm talking to BYU. They're hoping to to start with 6,000 in football, uh, which is lower than the number we were actually going to the governor with um, a month ago now. So we'll see where that all plays out. Uh, we've got different plans. And, I mean, it's not going to look the same. And our fans, we've had good renewal in basketball already. And uh, we're going to have to move them around at least for this year if we can get people in the in the spectrum and uh i think yeah that's one thing if you're if you if you've uh, renewed those tickets and you're getting excited and you should be because this should be a really great team uh just understand that it's there's going to be some things to play here that we're, we're yeah we're going to do our best to, be to get everybody an experience and it and it won't be what you're used to um and even where you you know we get used to where we sit and we want to be in that same place we're going to have to move that around if we can get people in the spectrum safely just from a science standpoint you heard the pac-12 make their announcement of their partnership with a rapid testing firm uh, where they believe hopefully by mid to late october they can be testing people on a daily basis is that what it's you know pre-vaccine is that what you feel like is probably going to be necessary to be able to get sports back at a high level well testing and contact tracing has been our bread and butter this yeah. this fall to this point and and we've been able to keep as many of our student athletes in in a, you know on the field and in the court or whatever as we can doing that um, rather than just shutting the whole team down we we've rarely had to do that so yeah the easier that gets and the and the and the quicker return time on on those results and with the CDC guidelines changing so much now we're at a 10-day uh, isolation period if you have uh, COVID. Yeah. 10 days from your test date. So, you know, you can test, get your results in 48 hours and you're back in a week at that point. It's almost in a weird kind of way. You're back quicker if you have. Not from when you get the result, but when you get the test taken. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So by the, t- you know, and if it's a four day turnaround, you're back in a week from there. So, um, I think we've refined it to the point where I, I, I can see a lot of success in playing and managing our sports in a COVID world. And we're not, I mean, every day we, we talk about vaccines for a vaccine at the earliest to be something that's wide, widely used and available. We're looking at mid 2021 to end of 2021 at this point. So we have to move on with the idea that we won't have a vaccine to, to, to figure this out. Mm. Um, the other element to it as well is is uh, travel for basketball and, and travel for other sports too. And I think that's something that is, is on top of your mind too. And I mean, there was, there was some tournaments, some other things in play. And I know that that's, that's a big question mark as to 
you know, do we go to these tournaments? Do you, do you travel, your, your normal travel schedule? And it's it's just a lot easier when you have 15 as opposed to 85 or how many you ever travel with football. No question. Uh, now, the chartering situation for football makes it a little easier, and we do charter some basketball, but um, it is easier to, to get about and move about. And there is talk about a bubble. I, I hear people say, why can't you just bubble – all of it. Well, you know, that was a hugely expensive proposition for the NBA. Yeah. Um, 175 one, million. Yeah. yeah. So and that's that might one be on thing. The, that might be on the low, low side. side. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we have student athletes that need to be in class and, and doing that. That's an important part of what we do. So I could see some tournaments coming about where you could bubble inside those tournaments, which would, you know, would be very interesting to us. Um, and we'll, we'll be looking at those opportunities. So there are some good things about that bubble concept within some of these tournaments that I think we need to look at. Wrap things up coming up next. Final segment straight ahead. You're listening to the Aggie Coaches Show. Jerry Bovey, Ryan McLean, right here on 97 on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. The show, you're listening to the uh, Aggie Coaches Show right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Uh, this has been a fun show today. A lot, uh, lot to wrap, uh, wrap our arms around. And uh, hopefully, uh, is there, you know, uh, we talked a little bit about basketball. Um, when do you anticipate uh, knowing kind of a start date? I've heard anywhere from like the 15th, 16th of this month. That's that's kind of what uh, what we're, we're here in the conference is still trying to figure out at the same time what a spring yeah. they're still focused on the spring and there's some meetings this week with student athletes and coaches and then uh, I mean by the 
middle to the end of the month, I think the picture will be a little clearer on what basketball's plan is. Because I think that's what people want, really, is like, okay, if we're not playing, what's what's the plan? And I know you guys are working feverishly behind the scenes yeah. and that, to put that plan Honestly, in that was what was so difficult about how we got to uh, a cancellation of the fall sports season. You know, initially we heard all the pundits nationally saying by by august 1st we just have to know yeah. and august 1st came and went and we were it just kept getting we we i uh, coach anderson and i talked today about we've become professional can kickers yeah right we're yeah. just we're just everything's still in play we're keeping all the plates <laughs> moving and and we're everyone's waiting to the last available minute to figure it out and and for those that did wait, they're playing football right now. I yeah. mean, that game last night happened, and, we, you know, we'll get a question. We did get a question, why are they playing and we're not? And, you know, the easy answer is for them, they, they don't belong to a conference, and, and we we have a lot more siblings to deal with their issues. In. <laughs> when half the siblings are in California yeah. and other states that are struggling. Different perspectives for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if we can, if we can be patient – uh, I think we got a good chance of, of getting it going. You don't want to push push on it too early and cancel it. You know, you want to stay in the game as long as you can, but we need to know. Yeah. Well, and I know that's something that you guys are working diligently towards and, and putting it together. Ryan, if people want to reach out to you and, and help out from a fundraising standpoint, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. yeah um, you can contact me directly. All of my information is on the utahstateaggies.com staff directory, ryan.mcclain at usu.edu. Um, Aggies Unlimited at USU.edu. Call us up at the athletics department. Our information's on there as well. So we, uh, yeah, we're we're easy to get a hold of, and, and we'd be happy to talk and and just kind of plug in Aggie strong again. I mean, we're off to a good start, but we have a long way to go, and um, we need as many people to hop on board as possible. Um, it's you know, it's more than just the games, and we're we're seeing that it's about it's about the student athletes and uh, developing them for for the rest of their lives and preparing them for the future. So we. Uh, we need the help, and uh, so, yeah, whether it's $10, $10,000, if it's a scholarship, if it's a naming opportunity, whatever it is, we, uh, we'd we love to talk to you about that. And uh, before we let you go, um, again, the uh, auction coming up in November, the 5K, though, coming up next weekend. Yes, correct, yeah, 5K next weekend. Um, again, all that information is on utahstateaggies.com or aggiesunlimited.com. You can find all that, so 5K next weekend. And then the auction in uh, in mid November there, so it should be a, we got a lot of stuff to look forward to, even though we're not we don't have games this fall. <laughs> well, you know, like like you mentioned, these are opportunities yep. to have some fun and throw some stuff up against the wall and see if it sticks. And that's the one thing that uh, of all things that make Aggies Aggies is that connection point. I mean, we've talked about it many times. Yeah. It 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 never leaves your soul, and and I've found true Aggies to be that way. I mean, whatever we can do to connect and to continue. Um, to be together. That's what this is all about, being in a saggy family. All right, before we let you go, uh, you're here at Old Chicago, perfect pizza toppings. You don't strike me as a pineapple guy. Pineapple and ham for me. Oh, my gosh. Really? <laughs> Bacon and green peppers. There you go. <laughs> now we're talking. Hey, big thanks to Old Chicago. Hey, come on by, hang out with us. We'll be here every Tuesday uh, throughout the season. So come by. We're here again, Old Chicago. That and his crew do such a tremendous job. Grab yourselves some food. Hang out with us next Tuesday right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.